It's the NFL playoffs on EA Sports. No bigger stage than this one. Sold out MetLife Stadium, located just outside of New York City. Coming up, it's Divisional Round Saturday, and we've got an AFC battle on tap between the Cleveland Browns and the New York Jets. The first of four berths in the conference championships on the line here as Divisional Weekend in the NFL is underway. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. At their own 25-yard line. Chubb. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Kenny Clark in on the Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. A run for Nick Chubb. Trying to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. Picking down right two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. his car on third down and he connects with Ertz and they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44 complete just what the Browns needed there good for a gain of 17 17 the advantages of zone defense as I remember it is being able to see the play develop in front of you when the disadvantages when they find those levels where they can hit you with it sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety it makes it tough to defend First down, they'll run with Chubb. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. That'll wind up going for a loss of four. And that's going to make it second and 14. On the ground, it's Chubb. And he'll push this forward only to about the 42-yard line. Ball carrier. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who could do more than one thing. And I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. On is the punt team now as this one sent away. The Jets take over first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. get about three as he's taken down at the 23. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Now second and seven from the 23. Watch the slant. Back 
Hurt sets up to throw it. The first catch of the game for George Kittle. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A first down there on a pickup of 25. First and 10 at the 48-yard line. Now Cook. Cook with a first down and much more. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. A big chunk on the ground there, 27 yards. Well, partner, I have to say they caught him in the right defense there. Nickel set, fifth defensive back on the field, and they love to run against that because now you typically get a bigger blocker on a smaller defender. Yeah, because those DBs like you, they want the interception. They're not as worried about the running play, right? <laughs> not at all. And I, I, used to, I, I still remember being in school and one of my offensive line teammates used to say, boy, I'd love to come downfield and hit you little people. <laughs> Good run there. And the last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Play action. Here's Hertz. He gets this one into the hands of Dalvin Cook. And he's in. Touchdown, Jets. A 22-yard touchdown grab. And the Jets have taken a first-quarter lead. One of the keys to their long winning streak has been scoring first. An ideal drive right there, getting the first six points of the ball game. Do you go back to our meeting with the offensive coordinator? Oh, yeah. what he told us? Absolutely. With some teams, I script to probe in the early part of the game. Other teams, I script to attack. They've been in attack mode for these ball games and continue that in this one. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. 23-yard line. The Browns drive about to get started. They're forced to play catch-up early in this division round game as they search for a seat in the AFC Championship round. On first and 10, here's Carr. Trying to get it to Beckham, and it's intercepted. Picked off around the 27, and he brings this one back. It's a pick six and a jet touchdown. And we'll see if that pick six looms large as this game continues because we've seen plays like that alter a lot of playoff contests over the years. I would agree with that totally. And you often think to yourself, why do they alter it so much? Because after games, don't we hear coaches and players say, well, one play doesn't usually determine the outcome. But I don't think that's really true, do you? Because there's times when we see plays like that, and all of a sudden the momentum jumps to that team side, it deflates the other side, and they never pick it back up. And then things really go from there, don't they? That's the thing for me. We talk about momentum changes. A play like that is the ultimate momentum change. The Browns drive about to get started, and they just had that pick six. I guess the only positive maybe of them returning that for a touchdown, this offense right back out on the field to try to make up for it. I like that because now it doesn't give them a chance to go to the bench and really settle, you know, to sit there and kind of seethe over the idea that they turned the ball over previously. Right back out there, it's almost like hopping right back on the bike after falling over. See if they can get the ball moving again. Yeah, we'll see if they can do it here. Now here's a throw, and that's Taewon Taylor with it. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Just one catch for him last week in the wild card win, but getting involved early here and picks up the first. Carr completes it. Seven yards, the pick up there. Four receivers in the formation here. Three to the left, one to the right, second and three. Brings up second and play action. Now it's Carr. 40 yard line. He gets this into the hands of Taylor. And all the way in. Touchdown, Cleveland. Tay one Taylor. 40 yards. And the Browns are back within a score. The extra point. Well, these may be an adventure this afternoon, but this one is good. Brown seven. Following the touchdown, here's Cybert now to kick it off. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. Ridiculous reverse, such a force of nature. I don't want to seem absurd, but that 
The New York offense taking over for their next possession. And that last touchdown drive, a good mix of pass and run. Defensively, they just looked a little out of whack. And it's so hard to stay up with an offense that has things going so well where you're guessing and guessing wrong play after play. So what you need is someone on the defensive side of the ball leader, right? to make a big play. Yeah. Throw that balance out of whack. That's what you're looking for now. Not worrying so much about guessing what the play call is. Rolling to his left. Well, you most certainly don't want to go three and out here and get the football right back because your friend, old momentum, he's wondering if he should change sidelines about right now. And if you don't convert here, guess what? He's going to make the trek to the opposite side, and all of a sudden, you've got a battle on your hands. Here's Hurts to throw. And that is incomplete. And this is what you want to see from a defense. Give up an opening drive touchdown, that's fine. But how about them going back out there, recommitting themselves to the task at hand, and forcing a three and out, and giving the ball back to their offense. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. At their own 20-yard line. The Browns drive about to get started. Well, things are starting to move in the right direction. They get the touchdown last drive, then their defense gets them the football back. Yeah, now they have a chance to get the lead if they can put something together here. And I'm eager to see how they decide to do it. Do they want to be methodical, or do they want to take the big strike and go after it right now? And he's got some space here. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. 36 yards on the play. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times defenses say, okay, we've got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. Throwing on first down is Carr. And it's hauled in by Austin Hooper. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. First catch for him in these playoffs. He was held without one last week, but he's got a first down on that effort. from the gun it's Carr and a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete well let's see who this is on in the pocket chucked it away flag comes down so you got to move a little bit right know where you are on the field have some awareness tackle to tackle you got to get outside of that tackle box in order to get that done second down and he finds his tight end it's Ertz if they didn't have that penalty a moment ago it'd be a first down still a nice 13 yard pickup the goal for any offense versus his own defense find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it they did it well there perfectly executed crossing route Side, they're going to go option here. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. He lost two, and it brings up four. This defense has really flown around in the first half. They've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started. Offense got to come up with something else in order to try and get this running game going. Cybert able to knock this one through. And that will cut the lead back down to three at 13 to 10. So a good kick there. They put the bow tie on it with three points. And let's face it, everybody <laughs> wants a touchdown. We know that. But the NFL, defenses are awfully good. You're not going to score each and every time. Be able to knock the ball through the post and take the throw. By the way, I said bow tie. I meant just bow. Either way. Not the tie, but yeah. Either way. You got it. I just went right past it. 
The New York offense taking over for their next possession. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. They'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. A six-yard pickup. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. On second down. It's Cook, and he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. himself up, but in the end the pressure too great and he goes down Olivier Vernon in there to get him it's a loss of five second quarter action two minutes to go on divisional round weekend we remind you, as we've done all year, that coming up at halftime, we will visit with Jonathan Coachman standing by in Orlando. He'll let you know what's going on here on a very eventful divisional round weekend. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. It looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. Come on, QB, come on. 56 the mic. 56 is the mic. You better bring it. You bell street. 19 tight. 19 tight. Bring it. 56. Mike, 56. Right there, right there. Go. Throwing from the gun. It's Hurts. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. That could be the stop this defense needed to get them back on track. They've been pretty well dissected by the offense here in the first half. After that possession, now they know that they can compete with this offense. Now this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. At their own 20-yard line. The Browns drive about to get started. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. And the Browns first down. Car now on first down. He'll get that one to Taylor complete. No gain there on the completion. Second and ten. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. To throw again on second down. Carr. He's got the hook up to Odell Beckham. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. Four catches for him in the wild card win a week ago. And he's got his first here. And it's a first down. Again, they'll throw with Carr. That's out to Chubb, complete. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Throwing again on second down. Carr. 
Oh, did he hang on to it? He did on the dive. Nice grab. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 19 seconds to go in half number one. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. They give the chub out of the gun. Calling a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Four yards on the pickup. Second and six at the 12 yard line. And we're going to get a timeout with two seconds remaining in the second quarter. So, with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit. A 29 yard attempt. Seibert's kick is good. So it's on to halftime in this AFC Divisional Round matchup. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, win or go home, that's the name of the game, and we're back underway with the second half of this AFC Divisional Round. And this will make it into the end zone. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line. So the same result had he opted for the touchback. 25-yard line. The New York offense taking over for their next possession. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that'll give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. A give to Cook out of the gun. Takes it to the 26, just a one yard gain. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. Force the incompletion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. From the gun, it's Hurts. And this is taken in by Darnell Mooney. And he's going to be brought down short of the first at about the 31-yard line. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. Here's the Jets punter now, as he'll come on to kick this one away. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Their own 20-yard line. The Browns drive about to get started. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Two yards the loss, second and 12. 18 yard line. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. From the gun, it's Carr. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away. And now it's third. So, Charles, tie game here. What are your keys as we continue to play this second half? I know people think it's always trite when you say the same things over and over, but they're tried and true in the game of football. Who's going to block better? Who's going to tackle better? In this case, to me, it's turnovers. You've got to take care of the football in order to win the game. Throw on third down. Carr. 
Now he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45-yard line. Last week in that wild card win, only one catch, and now he's got his first catch here, and it's good for a first down. First down. From the gun, it's a give to Chubb. And he'll only get a yard, maybe two, up to the 46. He was tackled. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. On play action, it's Carr eluding the pressure right. Caught on the right side by Jones. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets' 25-yard line. He got 29 yards that time. So in Jet territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 25-yard line. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. Shotgun now for Carr. And he gets it to his running back, Nick Chubb. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. It'll be a three-yard gain, and that's going to bring up a third down. from the gun. Carr. It's caught. Jones. And finally down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. They're able to convert on third down and that sets up a first and goal. to his right. Yeah, the Browns are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. And we have to give credit to him for buying time and extending the play. But you know, there's some really upset defenders on that one. They thought that they had him. Instead, he was coated in Teflon and got away. Looking to throw again on second down. Carr looking in zone, but it's incomplete. The pro bowler Odell Beckham, the intended receiver. But now it's third and goal. It's third down and goal. A big one coming in this divisional round playoff. Third and goal. They'll give it to Chubb. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Browns have taken the lead. He has been an integral part of the offense all season. And now in the playoffs, he's carrying it over. Had the touchdown last week in the wild card game. Now his second TD of the playoffs. Showing some consistency. And that's something that we have to keep in mind about the playoffs. Because we often think you have to be spectacular in order to win. I think consistent is what you're looking for. That can get you to the finish line. At their own 25-yard line. 
The New York offense taking over for their next possession. And here we are almost through three quarters of play, and this passing game still has not really found any kind of rhythm. Put it mildly because they're not even over 100 yards yet. And in today's NFL, where it's a pass-first league, that is quite surprising. Not many teams patient enough to stick with the run. Everybody wants to advance the ball through the air. They've got to get their timing back. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Off the play fake, here's Hertz. And this is incomplete. Thrown to the sideline and incomplete. Brings up third down and 11. The Jets on third down, 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and 11. Hurts sets up to throw it. Completes it to Samuel. And he is going to have a Jets first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, that's good for a first down. There's a guy who went over 1,000 yards receiving in the regular season, and now he's got his first catch of the playoffs. Throwing his hurts. Incomplete. So much for the best laid plans and best designed plays. That was good coverage along the sidelines. No place for that one to get in there. It sails incomplete. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off at the 35. And he'll return this one just shy of midfield to the 49. Well, so much of playing quarterback in the snow comes down to trying not to do too much. You can't just keep telling yourself, throws downfield, we've run every day in practice all year. But guess what? They suddenly become more difficult. And this one gets away from him and winds up an interception. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb. Takes to midfield, but no further. Just a yard there. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around a training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying it around campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. From midfield, here's Carr. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off at the 35. And the return stops just a little bit shy of midfield at the 48-yard line. At their own 48-yard line. The New York offense taking over for their next possession. And this is a unit that needs to get in gear if they want to play for a conference championship next weekend. Down seven here in the fourth and a very critical drive upcoming. Here's Cook as they begin on the ground. And if there was a lane there, it closed up quickly as he stopped for no gain. Second down. Carl Joseph up from his safety spot to make the play. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Hurts. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. Okay, you know my bias is about to come out here. A lot of people think that the offense is just moving in the wrong direction. I'd say they're moving in the right direction because the defense is pushing them back. Former defensive guy. Now, as a quarterback third and long, you really got to rally the troops here, don't you? Yeah, you do in a big way. And what else do you have to look out for? More pressure coming at you because it seems to be working pretty well. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. 14 yards, but they're still well shy of a first as that leads to fourth down. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down.
As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. The conversion is successful with a sizable gain of 13, and the decision to go for it looks like a smart one. A 10th carry in the game for Cook. Nothing doing. Barely able to muster a yard to hit the 35. Brought down at the 35-yard line. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Jets football as we get you reset here. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Second down, here's Jalen Hurts. Oh, a scrap for the football, and he's going to come down with it. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns 16. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. From the gun, it's a give to Cook. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. They run it again with Cook. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. A looming decision to make on the conversion, down seven. But first things first, they need to score as they come up on first and goal. And yes, he's into the end zone. So they get the late score they needed. And now the extra point can tie this thing up in the final minute. And while it appears the heavy lifting was accomplished by scoring the touchdown, they're still down one. That extra point is not a gimme. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. Good. That ties the game at 20 all. Fitting for what's been a tight ball game. We're all even at 20 now as the kick's away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. 25-yard line. The Browns drive about to get started. They've got work to do, but they do still have a bit of time here. And they've got to feel comfortable with that, but they have all their play sequences called. If they get out of bounds, that allows them to huddle and call another play. But if they don't, it's hurry up to the line of scrimmage and either spike it and stop the clock or continue to move it downfield in order to try and get in range and win this game. See if they can do just that. And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. They'll contain him to just four, second down. It's now second and six. To throw his car. Caught by the tight end Ertz. And he's brought down after a very nice game. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as the clock will stop with 33 seconds remaining. I'll tell you, far from ideal conditions to play in, but neither offense has had much trouble. Plenty of points to go around. First and ten. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. He'll get this to Chubb out of the backfield. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. It's a gain of nine. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why. What we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play. One-on-one -on -one matchup if someone's trying to cover them, but they also like those one-on-ones downfield after the catch when they're running with the ball. They think they're going to win those, too. The Jets are going to use the first of their timeouts. 
as he'll stop it with 27 seconds showing on the clock. Again, the Jets' defense once more stopping him behind the line. Brought down back at the 43-yard line. Now Carr. And he connects with Ertz. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And we will get a timeout with two ticks left. So everything rests now on the right foot of Austin Seibert. And we will get a timeout with two ticks left. So everything rests now on the right foot of Austin Seibert. This to book a trip to the AFC title game. And the kick is good. He puts it through and they are moving on to the AFC championship game the Browns gonna roll on as we say so long everybody thanks for watching so that'll do it for my partner Charles Davis and the best darn crew in the industry I'm Brandon Gaunt this has been a presentation